Truth. I'm Brother Alan Jackson, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with this another outpouring of his tender love and mercy and that he's allowed me once again to be on this the time side of life and to have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I want to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for their service to the gospel truth. It's my prayer that God will continue to bless them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers, and I'm praying that God will continue to bless you and your family with those things that he knows that you are standing in need of as well. And I am encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer, and it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. And so once again this evening, we're going to forego our public service announcements, our prayer list, and uh, we do have a guest speaker for you tonight. But before we get to the guest speaker, I want you to know that the uh, members of the San Pablo Avenue Church, Christ, located at 3354 San Pablo Avenue, is inviting you to save the dates, June 22nd through June 27th. That's for the Vacation Bible School that will begin at 6.30 p.m. and end at 8.30 evening, 8.30 p.m. in the evening, all right? And so snacks will also be served. So keep that in mind. Vacation Bible School, June 22nd to the 27th, 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., all right? 3354 San Pablo Avenue in the city of Oakland. And that's an invitation from the members of the church. All right. So now, without any further remarks, our guest speaker tonight will be Brother Ralph Smith. I want to share with you. I must not tarry long. All right. So therefore, I want to announce the subject, the promise of his abiding presence. All right. This is found in 1 John chapter 2, verses 24 through 27. I should not read it for expediency's sake because I'll cover it in the text as I deal with an extra devil. If we were to boil down the message of this epistle, the presence of God All right. has always been of great significance in the lives of his children. All right. For it is the presence of God that not only sanctified the place in which God was pleased to dwell, but God's presence also gave purpose to the place All right. that we dwell. Yes, yes. When God's presence abode with the children of Israel, as they departed from Egypt, you remember that God led them and guided them by day with a pillar of cloud, yes. and by night a pillar of fire, yes. so that they would know that his presence is with thee. Yes, sir. When God's presence abode upon Mount Sinai, the law was given, and Israel received commandments that gave them life with God. When God's presence abode within the tabernacle, his glory filled the place, and fire came from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings that was upon the altar. The abiding presence of God 
in each of these instances indicated that God displayed the fact that he desired to dwell among his people. Amen. The manifestation of the God's glory was God's way of demonstrating his desire to reveal himself and dwell among those who have been born again into the body of Christ. God dwelt among his children so that his reality and that his splendor would be known. And therefore, they would not make the severe mistake of formulating an image of him that was like unlike him. Mm -hmm. If you recall in Deuteronomy chapter 4, well. verses 11 through 12, as Moses recounts the giving of the law on Mount Hur, he reminds them as they were gathered near the mountain to hear God speak. They didn't see any similar to of anything. They only heard God's voice. God dwelt with them that way because he didn't want them corrupting themselves by having an unrealistic image of him in their minds, which would have led them to form some disease degree of graven images. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 15 through 20. Let me say, having an unrealistic view of God has always been a danger and a threat to lead God's people into apostasy right. and idolatry. Yes. This would cause God to remove himself from the presence of his people. Y'all wait on me. Come on. I'm gonna get to where you want to be to be. But let me first just set it up. Not understanding God for Israel would lead them into idolatry. And to the children of God to whom the apostle John was now writing. I want to point out a wonderful characteristics in this letter or epistle written by John. All right. You see something about John, no matter how severe he might be in his rebuking right. and how strongly he might be insisting on sound doctrine, right. he always shows a beautiful promise. Right. Look at verse 25. And it says, this is a promise that he had promised us even eternal life. No matter how difficult, no matter what the problem, no matter what is the obstacles, no matter the situation we might find ourselves in, God has given us exceedingly great and precious promises that we can be partakers of his divine Nietzsche. In my opinion, in this preacher's opinion, one of the greatest promises he has given us parallels to eternal life. Can I get a witness? The promise that he gives us after my dear friend has spoken on the subject, he promised us his abiding presence. So there are three things that I want to talk to you about. First of all, we're going to talk about the promise of his abiding presence. Verse 25, and this is the promise which he himself made to us, which is eternal life. The greatest promise ever made to any of us is the promise of eternal salvation. This promise succeeds every other promise that has been made. Can I get a witness? Number two, the protection of his abiding presence. These things have I written to you concerning those who are trying to deceive you. It is important to remember 
that all individuals who talk and practice religion are not necessarily children of God. Amen. Can I get a witness? Yes, sir. And then thirdly, the power of his abiding presence. Verse number 27. And as for you, the anointing which you receive from him abide in you. And you have no need for anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, it is true, it is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you abide in him. False teachers and the Antichrist were going around denying that Jesus was the Christ. Uh -huh. If they were trying to lead others astray with this damnable heresy. And we call them the Gnostics. To really appreciate what John is dealing with in this letter, it's important for us to understand the religious philosophy of the Gnostics. The Gnostics base its foundation in the idea of knowing and knowing and having such an intellect that you, that it exceeded anything that man could ever bring. Right. Let me deal with the Greek word, right. nonsense. Right. Meaning to know. Are y'all with me so far? Right. See, they tell me it's a lecture ship, so I don't have to get down like Willie. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I, I, Willie, I used to get up when I was younger like your age. <laughs> Boy, I'm preaching my head off. But when you get old, you know how to take it slow. Right, brother. Gnosticism centers on a search for higher knowledge, believing that, that through knowledge one can obtain salvation from this material world. The Gnostic denied that God came in a human form as a man. Right. They denied that he walked the earth in the persons of Jesus to bring redemption and salvation to the world. John encouraged the children of God to hold on to what they know to be true of God because it is no lie. Verse number 21. And anyone who denies that Jesus Christ is a liar, verse 22. Right. And not only does he not have any part with the Son, but he doesn't have any part with the Father either, right. verse 23. All right. So the promise of his abiding presence was critically important to them as they read this letter. Right. John doesn't want the children of God to be fooled and deceived by lying in the Christ. So he exhorts them in verse 24 to abide and stay within them. And when he talks about the them that they ought to stay within, he's talking about the women that was left because some had already walked away. And they, John said they were not of us. If they were, they would have stayed with us. So John purposely stretches the concept to remain. He weaves this in six times within the verses of 24 through 28. John expresses the same thing that David did. And David said, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Psalms 11 and verse number, Psalms 119, verse number 11. John wants his readers to meditate on the word, to live by, not just day by day, but moment by moment. John is saying to us, in the 21st century, it has application. John is saying in essence the truth that you heard concerning the Father and the Son from the very first time you heard the gospel. Yeah. Let it stick with you. Yeah. Right. Don't allow anybody for any reason to come along right. 
and cause you to abandon the faith. Therefore, the statement, the statement that you heard, that statement that you heard from the beginning is, listen to this, the message of the gospel. It is what? The gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the gospel, the truth of the word. It is the gospel of God, verse 21. It is the gospel of the apostolic age. 1 yes. Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. If that which you have heard from the beginning remains in you, because from the beginning you understood that Jesus and the Father were one. Right. Verse 5. My Father worked and I work it. That's in John chapter 5. In verse 23, that all men should honor the Father even as they honor, honor the Son as they honor the Father. All right. Now, let's get to protection of his abiding presence. John continues, there's more to knowing God than having just the intellect. All right. You see, he wanted us to be planted and rooted. Notice that baby, as he continues exhorting them right. and encouraging them, he said that this promise that God has given you, he said, keep that promise. Remember that it abides in you. All right. Look at this now, brothers and sisters. He says, God deserves to dwell in you, yeah. All right. which he's promised even eternal life. Right. So with his desire to live in us, you all recall in John, the 14th chapter, that was so eloquently shall I say, elaborated upon by my dear brother. All right. John, the 14th chapter. The disciples were troubled at the idea that Jesus would go back to the Father. In John 14 and verse 16, the promise of the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, right. was given by Jesus before the cross. In John 14 and verse number 18, John, Jesus promised not to leave them Comfortless. Right. This word comes from the Greek, Greek word, orphanus. In other words, we get our English word, orphan, from this particular word. So Jesus was saying that he would not leave the believer to be like an orphan. In other words, he is not going to abandon us and leave us helplessless, hopeless, and fearful, and without. He says, I will not leave you. All right. The promise of the presence of the Holy Spirit yes, will provide the answer to the problem that orphans often experience. In John 17, in verses 2 and 3, in the American Standard Version, even as thou gavest him authority over all flesh, that to all whom thou hast given him, he should give eternal life. All right. And this is the life, that they should know thee the only true God, and in him whom thou didst sin, even Jesus Christ. Right. You ought to remember 1 John chapter 5, and verse number 11. And the witness is this, that God gave unto us eternal life. And this life is in his son. All right. May I suggest to all of you that have stayed today that the promise of God is far too valuable to allow some seducing deceivers to come and cause you to be lured away from the truth yes. and into hell. Yes. Therefore, that's the reason why John is writing to make sure that they don't lose what they have. Am I right about it? John chapter 4 and verse number 13. Hereby we know 
that we dwell in him and he is in us because he has given us of his spirit. All right. Notice verse 27. John mentions that they have an anointing. Did you get that point? All right. This anointing is the means by which God's presence is going to abide in them. The anointing as the subject of this verse is the presence of God's Holy Spirit within them. All right. And the Spirit of God has always taught them what they needed to know right. so that they would not be deceived by false teachers. Right. Notice a few things concerning the anointing. When you look at the word and we deal with the anointing oil, I remember when I was growing up in the church of God in Christ and I remember that they would anoint you, get some oil and put it on your head. I, that was my experience as a child. Uh -huh. All right. But when I became a man, I put away child to sleep. Right. And I understand that the anointing of power to the head of the sheep to keep bugs and insects from getting into the wool of the sheep and into the nostrils of the sheep. All right. You remember when the insects got into the wool of the sheep or in their nostrils, the, the sheep would just run and bang their heads against the wall with the attempt to get rid of the insects. Yeah. Right. So by the anointing of God's Holy Spirit, right. we don't have to knock our heads against the walls and frustration of life. Can I get a witness? Why? Because the presence of the Holy Spirit provides us the means to allow everything to like water. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you, the Holy Spirit instillates us. And the wolves can't carry us away. The ticks can't bite us. When you have the Spirit of God dwelling in you. It leaves me with the Holy Spirit and, oh, Willie, you just jumped all over my son. Make man, grown man want to cry. In Ephesians 6 and verse number 18, Paul says something, praying always with all supplication in the spirit. And all you that have gathered here have gone through some trials in your life. Can I get a witness? Some of you have arrived even this week with burdens that just seem to be too heavy to carry. You met disappointment after disappointment. You had death come in your family. You have aches and pains that you can't even explain. You have loneliness and doubts and fears that you came in with. You have experienced some failures in life. I, I, I say all of this because I remember one time. I remember the time that I was near death just a few years ago. I remember the time that I couldn't walk and people had to help me up and down out of the pulpit. I remember the time that I prayed so hard I wanted God to take me out of this world. I remember I didn't know how to talk to him. But hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God almighty. Hello. That I didn't have to become uncertain. I didn't have to worry about what that was all about. You know why? The reason why is because like the spirit also happened in our infirmities. I didn't have to articulate it. I didn't have to need, I didn't need a PhD in order to define what I wanted to talk to God about. All I needed was the Lord help me. Now I stand before you now. Well, well I didn't think I would stand again. Mm -hmm. But God spared me by yeah. his mercy. Thank God. Thank and see, God. what I had to depend on mm -hmm. was my faith in God. Well. But when he was weak, he still came to me. Mm -hmm. 
At my lowest point, yeah. he came to me. Now, another point I want to ponder. Jesus promised to send another comfort. Mm -hmm. That's significant in the Greek. There are two different words for another. Oh, in that case, we won't get to that point. <laughs> Yes, we got to get to another point. <laughs> Did you see that? I remember I used to get me something like that, and I would just go, oh, no, 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 no. I'm too cool for that now. Yes, sir. I'm going to get to my final vibe. My, is that all right? The power of his body presence. All right. Is that all right? Those who had received this letter were challenged to abide in the relationship with the Father and the Son, which they had beginning in their Christian walk. If they would only do this, it would exhort or transfer into eternal life. The Christians then, and I believe even now, need to rest in Christ. The Christians being, and I know even now, need to enjoy their faith and put their weight down and depend on the power yes. of the eternal God. Amen. Because the Bible said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. In the indwelling of the Holy Spirit gives us We have the same power that working in us that God used to raise Jesus from the dead. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 20. Don't have time to read it. But now, unto him that is able to do exceedingly in abundance above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. that the Ephesian saints or the saints there right. would become strong yes. in their spiritual lives. Yeah. And, and, and Paul knew that the Lord was sufficient to do everything they needed. All right. They were to place their complete trust yes. and their confidence in him. Yeah. It's amazing, simply amazing, what the outer man can endure when the inner man is strong. Yeah, yeah, right. Can I get a witness? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Paul knew it from his own personal experience. Yeah, right. He had faced difficulties. He had survived hardships. Yeah. He had overcome strong opposition. He had withstood angry mobs. And he could testify in the very end of his life, I have fought a good fight. And I kept the faith. Am I right about it? He was physically weak due to a stone. But my brothers and sisters, that was the outside of the story. The inside, he was strong. Am I right about it? And just as the Lord did it for Paul, he'll do the same thing for you. Yes, sir. Because God always works from the inside out. All right. He starts on the heart and works toward the surface. Yeah, yeah. And if the inner man is what we need, he said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Then the outer man will be taken care of yeah. in time. Can I get a witness? Yeah, yeah. So if you want to be strong, you want to be spiritual strong, when you go home today, I want you to know one thing, that when you're strong, the determination that we need to face our difficulties, God will give. 
Yeah. When you want to be strong, mm -hmm. the courage that we need to face our crisis, yeah. God is able to give. Can I get a witness? Amen. Can I get a witness? I'm trying yeah. to close yeah. now. Yeah. 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 The peace that we need to face our problems, yeah. as well as our complexities, God will give. Yes, sir. The power that we need to deal with boldness when we face our battles, God will provide. Yeah. The faith that we need to face our fears, as well as our frustration, God will survive. Yes, Am I right about it? Yeah. Why? Because we have the promise All right. of his ever abiding presence. I want to thank you for your attention and your patience while this elderly man in his feeble way tried to share something with you. I'm going to help you appreciate what you already have. 